Thanks. Well, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. But I hate to follow a guy like Jeff. You know, the very first responsibility of this nation's government, and especially its commander in chief, is to protect America's national security. It has been a long standing policy of this United States to never negotiate with terrorists or their sponsors. And consequently, the West imposed sanctions on the Islamic Republic of Iran with the absolute commitment that those sanctions would only be dismantled when Iran's nuclear weapons program was dismantled. But Barack Obama completely ignored that original commitment when the pressure from those sanctions brought the jihadist government of Iran to the negotiating table. He blindly accepted whatever Iran put on the table and he completely forgot who was at the other end of that table. And he proceeded to capitulate on every red line and every minimum requirement that both he and the United Nations had required. He has now squandered away every form of leverage that we had against this theocratic radical regime which has broken every promise it has ever made. And in return, Mr. Obama got another rope-a-dope, duplicitous, unverifiable, and astonishingly unenforceable promise from Iran to temporarily, to temporarily slow their inexorable advancement toward nuclear weapons. President Obama's insane agreement legitimizes and empowers Iran's anti-American jihadist government. It appears, and it, it, he lifts all sanctions, it lifts bans on Iran's weapons, its imports, ballistic missile programs, allows Iran a protected protocol to enrich uranium and research even more advanced centrifuges. It gives them tens of billions of dollars which with they can continue to spread their terror and destabilize expansionism throughout the world. It allows them to continue their human rights abuses. It allows them to illegally hold American citizens hostage and it allows their entire nuclear infrastructure to remain intact. All the while, the supreme leader and ultimate Iranian authority is publicly reaffirming his hatred towards the United States and publicly leading throngs of his supporters shouting death to America and death to Israel. Now, did I get that right? Did I get that right? That can't be right. Th that would be a deal far worse than the deal Bill Clinton made with the police state of North Korea that allowed them to develop nuclear weapons. My speechwriter says I got that right. Now he's saying that in an arrogant attempt to solidify this insane agreement that the President of the United States sworn before God to uphold the United States Constitution has just orchestrated a vote right here in New York to approve the Iranian nuclear deal and subordinate, subordinate the sovereignty of America, the United States Constitution, and the United States Congress. Wow. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm afraid that the Iranians have been watching Barack Obama for a very long time. And when he stood idly by, and knowingly watched as thousands of innocent civilians in Iraq were either butchered, tortured, raped, beheaded, crucified, or burned alive, the Iranian leaders knew that they had nothing to fear from Barack Obama. So they came to the table with nothing and walked away with everything. And now instead of making sure Iran never gets a nuclear weapons capability, Mr. Obama's politically motivated peace in our time deal empowers this and the most dangerous sponsor of terrorism on this earth and now places them on a sure path not just to obtain a nuclear weapon but an entire nuclear arsenal. So let me leave you all with this just one message. Ladies and gentlemen, there are only two mortal ways to affect America's critical policies. We can either elect the right leaders 
or we can beg failed leaders like Barack Obama to do the right thing, as we've done in vain for the last six and a half years. If Congress is not able to turn back this madness, if we do not elect a Republican president who will change this deal drastically in the future, Barack Obama is now on trajectory to be remembered as the father of the Iranian atomic bomb and as the one who ultimately nuclearized the entire Middle East. Now, there have been 34 vetoes in the history of the United States of a foreign policy bill by a president. Only two of those were overridden. By the grace of God, this nuclear agreement with Iran will be the third that will be overridden. And folks, for the sake of our children and for future generations, God help Congress to do just that, to reject this treacherous deal, and God help us all, God help us all to focus on the unspeakable importance of the coming elections in America. Shalom.